Hey everyone, it's Scott Norris here. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about PKS and specifically the integration with uh, PKS and Virilize Automation. Now PKS is uh, joint venture, Pivotal, uh, VMware and Google, uh, the K standing for Kubernetes of course. And you know the idea is to be able to operationalize and manage your Kubernetes clusters uh, day one and day two uh, and you know really simplifies that, uh, that operational side of things. So I've already deployed uh, Ops Manager and Pivotal, um, Bosch Directory and Pivotal Container Services. So that's all running. I'm going to have another video showing the installation steps on this at a later date. Uh, that's currently up and running. And as if we can see, I can go to my um, clusters here and I've got two existing clusters. Uh, we've got K85 and uh, VRAO2. So what we can do here is go to Virilize Automation. Now under Containers, in Virilize Automation 7.5, it's got the Unified Container uh, Management. And what it allows is we can, you know, provision containers to Vic, to Docker compliant uh, endpoints, uh, as well as Kubernetes, as well as integration directly into the PKS endpoints. Now I've already added the endpoint here. Now I'm not gonna re-add it to show, but it's quite simple, is that you add a name, you give it the UAA address uh, and you give it the PKS address. So these are what you set up during the installation of uh, PKS. Uh, and for me, I used api.pks.virtualizeme and we can see the different ports there. Now you've got to create a credential under uh, identity management here. And that's with your login that you'd also create uh, as part of it. Then what we do is we go to the plans so as part of the plan assignment, now I've only got, if we go and have a look at my thing here, I've only actually given one plan is active. The other two plans are inactive. So you can have three plans uh, in total. Now what we can do is we can configure these to go to our business groups. So I can add uh, a new one here and I can say, you know, business group zero one here can also have that plan. So you can have a one to many relationship uh, but you can also uh, have different plans for uh, different business groups uh, if that's what you wanted. Uh, and then we have the clusters. So what this does is automatically pick up the clusters that you already have available. So you can have already deployed Kubernetes clusters with PKS and VRA will automatically detect them and add them in. Uh, then we go up to our clusters here and we can see this is the one I created natively through the command line before I even added it uh, to VRA, uh, and then we've got the one here, which is I've actually deployed that through VRA. And what we can now do is go to PKS clusters, and we can go, okay, let's have a look. I've got my two clusters here. And I'll just do that again. We can see we've got two, great. Now let's create another one. So if you give uh, end users the, uh, I think it's container developer role, they can actually come in and self-provision uh, Kubernetes clusters, uh, if that's what you want for your organization. See, but I can go new cluster. We can select the endpoint here, so I've only got one. We give it a cluster name. So we'll go uh, VRA U G. Uh, we choose our plan that we have available. I've only got one here. Uh, we can. This is actually what comes back as part of your plan. So if you go back here, plan one, we can see that's that's the description that actually comes through. Host name. So we give it a host name. So we go very YouTube. Um. And then master port, I'm going to leave that blank because just use it by default. Uh, for this, I only want it small, so I'll do one worker node. And in this instance, because the worker name, I haven't got that in DNS, right? So if I had it pre-populated in DNS, it'd probably be okay, but I want to connect via the IP. Because the integration with NSXT, it actually gets given that IP address uh, through the NSXT pools. And then we go create. So if we actually go back now to our command line, do that same, we should see, there it is. So there's a new one in cluster called uh, Vera YouTube Demo, 
and that's going to go through and complete. Now, if you, for um, those who want, is that you can log into Bosch, and I've got three deployments uh, there. Now I've got four. Uh, this will be the latest one. So I can actually uh, go PKS D, put that in, and then look at the tasks. Right, let's just double check. Uh, 28 if. Ah, wrong one. Sorry. Right. That's the name. Uh, let's do that again. Tasks. There should be an active one for deployment. Yep. And then we can go and go task and we go 1093 and we can actually sit there and watch that. Now this error, this warning is normal by the way. So this will go through, this will create the VMs. If we go into VMs, we can see that it's starting to create all the VMs from the uh, stem cells uh, that it has. And that's up here in my PKS class, the uh, PKS resource pool. And that's going to go through, and we can see there now in PKS cluster and VR8, it's automatically come in that it's provisioning. And great. So while that's waiting, uh, let's have a look at uh, something else. So that will eventually come good and go to on, and it'll have an IP address that it can connect to. Uh, then we, and you can then also download the KU config. If we go to deployments, we can see that I've got an Nginx deployment here already. Uh, but if I wanted to, if you want to deploy to hit these, we can go, okay, well, let's go um, to repositories. We can, this is just a very quick, we can find uh, a container that we can use. Let's use some lightweight. Uh, let's do a etcd. I'm sure someone's got an etcd. Um, Cluster there, all right. We do this, and you can see there, we can provision to Kubernetes. So we provision that to Kubernetes, we can add some different um, names, we can add a, a network, so on this one, let's go um, 8081. Let's go policies, and put shares and limits. Uh, we can do this, and we go provision. So that's gonna go ahead and actually provision that workload so it's uh, allocating provisioning now it says complete here but it's not actually complete so if we go and look at uh, let's have a look at There it is, there's the etcd. Uh, so I can go um, uh, let's describe that. Uh, we can see that it's currently normal, rolling update. It's using that port that I put in. Deployment default. Rolling update one available. Awesome. Now, if we go back to deployments here, we should see our etcd. So that's our deployment, and soon we'll see the pod appear. So I can go into uh, not there. That's still deploying. I can go to um, let's get pods. And we can see there's etcd, we can see that the containers are creating, so it's not ready yet.
Oh, my bad. All right, good. There we go. So it'll give us more information uh, about the pod. So it's, it's currently creating. Uh, there it is now under pods. So we can see now it's pending. It hasn't got an IP yet. But that's going to go through and deploy. Now one thing that I can do here uh, while, while we wait and actually double check. Alright, so that's now updating the master instance. Let's see, I'm getting a, a few there. Now, one thing that we can't do here with the deployments, and I'm not really sure why, I uh, still got asked a question, is that we can we can have a look at the details uh, of the deployments and of the pods. But what I can't do is delete them from here. So this keeps in sync with the Kubernetes cluster, meaning that if I delete uh, uh, a pod or a deployment uh, via command line, by kubectl, uh, 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 um, it will automatically disappear from here. And vice, but if I've created it on there manually, it doesn't seem to come up here. Uh, so, well, not unless before, um, if you've created stuff before you've added the cluster in, it doesn't come up there. And that's really it. So that's, you know, the, we can give, obviously, um, for one, you can have, you know, you don't have to worry about command line. Uh, your operations staff will be able to deploy Kubernetes clusters uh, for your developers. Your developers then can even have access to deploy their own clusters uh, via the... I'll just show the quickly the user groups. Now have a look at my dev01 user here. Under develop, container developer, they can actually log in and provision a Kubernetes cluster. They've got the capability to do that. So you can have self-service Kubernetes clusters for your development teams, um, but also you can then, they can either deploy uh, containers via the UI here if you wanted to, or they can just use their standard development tools uh, to integrate with the containers and spin up their, um, their, their workloads and their development and their testing and, and whatnot. Uh, the great thing about having this through here is that you can offer this as a, uh, you know, once they've developed their platform and their container uh, or containers, and it's now ready for general consumption by the rest of the organization, um, then you can have self-service to provision those up uh, via everyday people within the organization or even the admin team, whoever it might be, and they can do that themselves. Uh, so that's it. Uh, we're not gonna hang around and, and wait for the, the cluster to uh, finally provision. No, it's just gonna kick there and uh, go through the the motions now this is running on a nested environment particularly which is why it's a bit more a bit slower but it's generally uh, pretty fast if you've got dedicated kit for it anyway have a good one cheers bye